I'll try not to stand in the light. I, I saw some new people coming in, uh, maybe because they heard someone speaking French. This talk will, won't be in French, so you still have time to leave. Yeah. Um, although the other one also isn't in French, by the way. But um, yeah, let's first check, because my mobile device should be my remote control. So let's check if that's working. Or if I should do a refresh. Yeah. I it's think we might have lost the internet. It's already failing us. I did see a, uh, a little uh, alert at the top that it lost connection. So maybe we should first restart this one. Or uh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. this is an interaction delay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm leaving this one to you. Yep. And I'll just actually just get started. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Carlijn. Um, and we're here all the way from Groningen, the Netherlands. Uh, we actually came here by car with a toddler in the back seat. Um, and we drove through Paris. So uh, I cannot recommend that one. <laughs> uh, but we are actually very happy to be here today. Um, it's, a, it's a great event, very French. Uh, I'm now noticing that my French uh, learnings in middle school really failed me because I only remember bonjour. <laughs> uh, but uh, bonjour. We've uh, got an interactive slide, so. Hey, and start. we're back yeah. because actually uh, we called it uh, We Love Loaf. Uh, and that's not just for nothing because you thought you were here on IMP, but you are actually here in a love story. Because that's what you get when you get a woman on stage. Um, so, uh, yeah, because, well, this event is called Lo We Love Speed, and actually, we love the PageSpeed community. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Carlijn. I'm the CEO and co founder of Ambition. Um, I'm also a board member of Metro S Netherlands, and actually started the Lady uh, Magento community. Um, and happy to see you all today. Yeah, I'm not really going to spend time on introducing myself. You're in front of it, by the way. I am very uh, much so in front of it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to continue, but because we only have 45 minutes and quite some slides, so uh, here we go. Next yeah, one. because, yeah, fun fact. Um, we actually are married, which might be a first on this We Love Speed conference. Probably. Um, yeah, we've been together for 13 and a half years. Actually are married for six years this week, if we survive this one. <laughs> you'll, you'll be the witness. <laughs> you'll all be the witness of what's happening today. Yeah, but then again, we survived the periphery of France, so uh, Paris. So I, I, uh, I am confident about this one. <laughs> um, but we love speed, obviously, the web performance kind. Although Aaron is a big Formula One fan as well. Do we have any more Formula One fans? Three. Oh, only three. Okay. Only three. Yeah, that might be because, well, Max Verstappen is really good and we are Dutch as well. <laughs> so, um, because having good sex is a very important part of this love story. Uh, and not sex, <laughs> even though you might think that. No. Uh, side speed user experience, which is a term we coined ourselves, but we find this a very good term because that's what it actually is. Site speed user experience is what we are here for today at We Love Speed. Yes, next one. Yes, next one, thank yeah, you. Yeah. It's, uh, all it's all about responsiveness today. Yeah, because tell us it turns out, as Tammy already told us, uh, sucks sells. Um, there are many, many reasons why uh, you'd want to optimize for speed. And I think we all he heard a lot of them, but to just go through them very quickly, you could have evidence that you'll get more visitors, lower bounce rate, more sign up, more conversions, more revenue, which we like. Uh, and it has this little SEO ranking boost as well. Um, and as it turns out, uh, people who have websites and especially e-commerce or publishing websites love that. And happier users love that too. Uh, there's a lot of research, as Tammy already told us as well, uh, that to, perf to improve your web performance, you get more revenue, more returning visitors, and less bounce. So just happier users. Um, but to love, you need to be able to interact. Um, in real life, you want to uh, laugh and cry and talk. 
uh, on a website you'd also like to interact. Just a website that looks pretty, that you can do anything with, is just not that great. Um, so you want to click and scroll around, see movement, add to cart, have drop down, slide out, uh, and that's good for a website. Until uh, you do not want to get frustrated uh, with your loved ones. So, Erin? Yeah. You Next one. No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you, uh, no, there was a joke here. He's failing me. <laughs> we <laughs> had a responsiveness joke, <laughs> but uh, I'll uh, move on, I guess. Yeah, but because what you do not want is to get frustrated. You want a quick response to action. And actually, well, I'll just make the joke. As you might know, we are on LinkedIn a lot, especially Erin. And what happens sometimes is I ask Erin, hey, what should we eat for dinner? And then the response is like 10 seconds. I'm still writing a LinkedIn post by then. Yeah. yeah. That's an interaction delay. And that's something that we do not want. So that's it what we'll be talking about. It could cost us our marriage, for example. Yeah. So yeah, inter interaction and responsiveness as well is quite important. And that's why we figured let's throw in a quiz so you are all allowed to grab your mobile devices. I'm not sure if we should allow Barry to participate, but <laughs> he got his prize already, so feel free to do so. I'm going to stand over here to be sure to not stand in the light. So you can either scan the QR code or go to menti.com and enter the code. But I see uh, almost everyone grabbing their devices and taking a picture. So Because we right. figured if we're going to talk about interactivity, then why not make it interactive? You actually get a prize if you end up being first? Yes, check it out. It's a we have a rummy cup. Yeah, <laughs> with lighthouse scores. All right. Um, I'm just going to the next slide. You still have the ability to join in the next slide as well. There will be, uh, well, the menti.com, etc. Uh, at the top of the, of the, of the slide. Um, I already see some people being able to join already. Um, first of all, there are about seven questions. You get, obviously, points if you answer correctly. And the faster you answer, well, once again, the correct answer, the more points you get as well. Uh, there are some other slides as well, like this one, where we would just like to learn more about the audience um, and uh, see what kind of people we have in the audience. A lot of other people. A I'm lot of other people. I'm going to try to get rid of the... How, how do you identify? Board. Business owner? Uh, product owner? SEO? Commercial? I have no idea what you guys didn't identify as. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, and, and McAfee's oh. coming up now. Okay. <laughs> it's failing us all over. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I don't even see where the mouse is. Yeah, there yeah is. you have it. You have it. All right. You did not have it. Responsiveness. Well, this is a perfect demo because I already clicked about, I don't know how many times. You did it. Yeah. We all have right. 23 other people, by the way. <laughs> okay, that's a lot. Yeah. Is there anyone willing to... Tell us what kind of role it is. No one? Okay, doesn't matter. We can stay anonymous by the wi well during this quiz. Um, let's go to the next slide. Well, first of all, thumbs up for those who joined uh, the other React Next related IMP talk. No one? Very many. You're 11, all new to 15. IMP? Okay, in that case, we do have something to explain today. Um, do you want to? Uh, yeah, um, because. Uh, uh, um, a topic you'll hear many things about uh, today is, to is Core Web Vitals. Core Web Vitals are a measurement of real users' experiences uh, on Chrome browsers, I should say, uh, which measure, bleh, sorry, measure three items of success. Because, hey, if you have a pun, go with it. Um, loading speed, largest content for paint, visual stability, cumulative layout shift, and the one we'll be talking about today, interaction to next paint. Although I do want, I already see one thumbs down. Uh, for those, okay, not anymore. <laughs> for those <laughs> spotting an error in the explanation of these metrics, please give me a thumbs down. Who is already spotting an error in the explanation over here? No one. Oh, I, one. I saw Barry interacting. <laughs> so I did not expect anything else. But um, so it's saying when the element is loaded, when the image is loaded, while LCP is not about when an uh, image is loaded, but also when it became visible. And not even when it was rendered, because, well, I had a case recently where the image was rendered, but it was rendered way out of the viewport. 
So the LCP still wasn't triggered until some JavaScript was applied, bringing the image back into the viewport. So uh, we might think um, that when it's about the image, when the LCP, the biggest image within the viewport, um, is about when it's loaded, it isn't, which is already a perfect nuance. Um, but obviously, we're going to talk about IMP. So yeah, that's not we're not talking about LCP today. No, <laughs> <laughs> but it actually. Oh, oh, you spotted another oh one. No. Okay, well. well. Yeah. Uh, uh, th they're all less than or equal to, rather than less than. Ah, uh, okay. Well, fair enough. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You're correct. <laughs> yeah. Very correct. All, all right. right. So, uh, globally, 24% of tablets and 49% of desktop uh, users passed Core Web Vitals, um, which Aaron actually has a very nice... Also, to fact check, I uh, included uh, the BigQuery, uh, well, yeah, Query, um, so that you can check it yourselves. I actually did include uh, the, the smaller than or equal signs over here. So yeah, <laughs> it was a genuine mistake in the previous slide. But let's move on because we don't have a lot of time. Um, but the next slide will be a question. So here we go. Grab your mobile devices. And let's see how many are joining. 30, okay. And uh, you should be able, I think, to... Uh, if, that's if that's correct. And actually important, speed matters in this competition. Yeah. So... Uh, just as real life. You should be able to enter a username, I think. Uh, so use your uh, pet's name or whatever if you want to stay anonymous. If you think you're going to win this, use your own name. And For uh, bragging rights. Yep, yeah, ex ex exactly. And uh, here we go. Start quiz. First question. What percentage was passing Core Web Vitals on mobile in August 2024? The faster you answer, the more points you get. 25 to 30, 30 to 35, 35 to 40, 40 to 45, 45 to 50 percent. All right. All right. It already starts interesting. Um, well let's continue. Question two out of six. Some other questions will be, li will be later on. All right. Everyone joined already? Here we go. The faster you answer, the more points you get. Why did Google replace FID with IMP? Was it to annoy developers? FID only measured until time to interactive, or FID was in limited to first interaction and input delay? Okay. Nice. Well, now I'm curious who thought that Google introduced new method to <laughs> annoy developers. <laughs> who was it? <laughs> Gary? <laughs> uh, Andrea was pointing at you, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll come back at an to annoy developers later on. Um, Time to interactive isn't even part of Lighthouse anymore. Um, so uh, yeah, it's the, it's the last one. And uh, I only had limited space to, uh, to uh, add an explanation over here. Um, so uh, that's our goal today. Well, at least in the, this slide. So first of all, some dates. Um, it was actually last week that Google actually also removed FID from, for example, PageSpeed Insights, uh, Crux, et cetera. I'm not sure if it was, it's already fully removed from Crux, but it won't be part in the next published data, um, also removed from um, Google Search Console, for example, and it was already back in March this year that uh, FIT got replaced by IMP as a core web vital metric. All right, apparently a lot of people like this, do like this, the fact that uh, FID got replaced. And Google didn't do this to annoy developers. Um, you, could say, you could say Google is changing game the whole time. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this is a fabricated tweet, a fake tweet, but I did hear this as feedback from merchant and site owners, for example. Um, but yeah, um, to simplify things, if the interaction on your site was shitty before, the fact that there is a new metric isn't changing things. It's still shitty now. But what did change is we finally have a metric that is able to tell us that we have an issue. So um, yeah, I'm also glad with this new, I think everyone is glad within the uh, web performance uh, well niche that there is a new metric because it's way better to actually tell what the UX and interaction delays are. First question. All right, going to hit start quiz. The faster you answer, the more points you get. What has the highest correlation with INP? Is it someone's internet speed, someone's device, or someone's location? A lot of people are quite fast to answer. 
Some people are still doubting, I guess. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, sure, this was a, was a trick question, although in this room, well, we are quite correct. Um, but a lot of people think that um, page speed is just about internet speed, but it isn't. Um, Tammy also covered a bit about uh, uh, already. It's also about the type of device that people are using. One example, if I'm fed up with my device, my device typically goes to one of my parents, for example, and I buy a new one. Uh, which means that you will al always have people that are one device generation behind on others, maybe even two device generations, es especially uh, in, well, especially but in some countries, um, people might go online with uh, a very old device. So you will always have UX gaps. And in the end, when it comes to IMP, it's specifically someone's device, which basically dictates their experience. As a matter of fact, um, back at uh, Web Performance, uh, Performance Now event last year, Rick from Google came, came to us and asked us if, the, if he could dive into our data. And um, this was the outcome. Um, the better your device memory, the more green you see, which basically means the more good experiences there were. were. Um, and the amount of red was, was um, well, way less. So you can really see a correlation over here, depending on the type of device that you're using. And I actually really experienced this. I used to always buy the cheapest phone because uh, we have a toddler and the phone tends to end up on the ground. But I wanted a better uh, camera. So uh, a couple of months ago, I upgraded from a very cheap Motorola phone to an uh, expensive Google Pixel. And it is ridiculous how much of a difference that makes. Just for fun, you should uh, try just a normal low-end phone and then a high-end device and see how much of a difference that makes yeah. in your own experience. Because, well, as we all know, uh, uh, a high-end device uh, is temp is tends to be what we all have in this crowd. But your users do not. Um, and so that's all peers do, but yeah. but the nice but that's something like a business metric to think about in that case is that um, except for having a well cheap phone, I uh, I am wealthy enough to buy from your size. Uh, so by not focusing on uh, users with uh, less good devices, you're actually missing out on a huge part of pot potential revenue. Yeah, which is why. The Core Web Vitals likes to look at the 75th percentile as well to not only optimize for the average or median user, but also those under more difficult and challenging uh, circumstances and conditions. Um, to add, so we are a real user monitoring solution, Run Vision, um, uh, which means we site owners basically have to add a uh, JavaScript snippet to be able to get real user monitoring data. And uh, by using some, uh, well, browser data, device memory, in this case, we're, we are able to categorize users, your, the users of your site, however, uh, to prevent fingerprinting and to prevent uh, ending up in privacy issues. We, were only, uh, we are only able to um, grab this data, so users might have even faster devices than uh, 8 gigabytes, um, but we are not able to track that because of privacy reasons, etc. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Because I hope it makes sense that um, when you're able to do something with, well, CSS, that you don't end up using JavaScript instead, for example, to um, capitalize your, uh, well, text. Um, yeah, I just hope that it makes sense that the less you do with JavaScript, um, the better your performance will be. But um, reality is that we use a lot of JavaScript nowadays. Obviously, we cannot do without JavaScript. I did want to add two more uh, memes. Um, I hope every developer, although nowadays it might be a bit different, but I do hope that a lot of developers will start learning HTML and CSS first before diving into JavaScript. Um, but nowadays it might be different with frameworks like React, etc. Um, then you start using more JavaScript and in the end you figure, oh, maybe it might be a better idea to use the web platform instead of ending up using JavaScript. Um, and in the end, especially when it comes to HTML, uh, well, yeah, if you use plain HTML, once again, web platform, it will be fast. Not a lot of errors, etc. You don't run in crawlability issues, let alone performance issues. Um, and a link from where I got this meme. And I've got an example, actually stolen from someone, but I'll, be, I'll come back to that uh, later. Um, but I've got a question uh, about this slide. So grab your mobile devices, and the question will be, will the heading one be visible 
with this JavaScript. So here we go. We're going to go to the question right away. Everyone ready? All right, ready to place. We lost five, four people. <laughs> Apparently, they didn't see them ending up. Okay, here we go. Will the heading one be visible? No, yes, or only for a split second? <coughs> okay, quite divided answers. Um, but yeah, the correct answer is no. And for the following reason, um, it doesn't really matter. I, yeah, I've got two uh, screenshots basically uh, changing these two lines. So first adding the heading one and then setting it to display uh, none. And you might then expect the heading one to be visible at this very moment for a split second. However, that's not how browsers work. And that's the best eye opener I had. Once you learn about how browsers work, um, yeah, it's, it becomes way easier to understand how performance issues can arise, for example. So I've got another slide where I'm changing these two lines of code, um, but the, the output, the, the result, the visual result will be the same. For the browser, the order doesn't matter, well, in this specific case, because the, uh, the browser will basically add all of these lines as individual tasks, and in the event loop, they will all be executed before the browser will end up, um, well, yeah, doing the rendering part. And um, I could talk, and other people could talk about this for an hour. Some people might even recognize this, uh, this screenshot. Um, there's a QR code, although some symbols are in front of it. But um, if you actually Google for Event Loop by Jake Archibald, or if you actually just Google on his name, you already get this video for one hour long. Um, so I'm not going to, dis to, to uh, well, yeah, play this video. Um, but it is a very good explanation of how browsers work. And it's like a um, well eye opener of um, well yeah when working with performance in general. Because how does it work? And how does it work? Well, let's try to summarize it in um, well maybe one minute. Um, so um, whenever a new task is added to the queue, the browser will continue uh, getting rid of those tasks before even trying to 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 uh, well yeah continue with the the, the paint layout and uh, style tasks. So. Whenever you've got a lot of JavaScript going on, the browser will first try to get rid of all these JavaScript tasks before the next visual paint is happening, which is what IMP is about. I hope I summarized it correctly. So you might figure, okay, can I gen just maybe lazy load all my JavaScript and be done with it? Um, there are people that actually think this. Um, more often in SEO niche, I think, than actually developer niche. Um, as a matter of fact, there are plugins that are doing this, WordPress related, um, Shopify related. I'm not sure if we encountered this in Magento as well. Um, but it does, this might we not did, work. We did, by the way, we did, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this will work if you want to get a perfect Lighthouse score, because if you delay it by five seconds, then uh, it will be without the window, testing window of Lighthouse, for example. You might get a perfect score, share it on LinkedIn, and get a lot of likes. Um, but then you might end up seeing the website not passing Core Web Vitals because in, uh, so there's a difference by the way, um, and I think I've got a slide to cover that as well. Uh, there is a difference with uh, Core Web Vitals data and Lighthouse data. Um, but yeah, this might not actually work if you just uh, execute all JavaScript at once, it might still run in, real users might still run into issues. Which is what this meme is about. Um, you can pass Lighthouse but still feel Core Web Vitals. Also the other way around, by the way. Um, and Core Web Vitals is about real users, although coming from a subset of Google Chrome users, it's still real users, so you still have an idea of how real users are experiencing your website. So once again, it's especially SEO specialists that still think that, that the Lighthouse score matters for SEO. It doesn't. It's Core Web Vitals data. Obviously, you, you do need a sufficient amount of data to be able to even get Core Web Vitals data, and you will always get a Lighthouse score, but Lighthouse does not matter for SEO. Talking about Lighthouse, let's move on to the next question. We lost another few people maybe? Yeah, okay, we just continue. Which Lighthouse metric is closest to IMP? Is it? Time to interactive, total blocking time, time to first byte, or none. Mm 
Let's see how much I have to explain here. <laughs> okay. So total blocking time it is. Uh, time first byte is a trick question. It's about, well, not only server response time, but um, mostly about server response time. So it's not even uh, related to uh, IMP. Time to interactive, once again, isn't even a metric anymore in Lighthouse. Uh, it might still be used behind the scenes, but it isn't displayed in Lighthouse anymore. Um, so total blocking time is the best metric you can work with when you don't have Core Web Vitals data yet. But once again, there might not be a very strong relation be uh, between time first byte in Lighthouse and IMP in real life. All right, and why? Well, basically because real users cannot be simulated. That's wha why we do not have IMP in Lighthouse. We do not have IMP in synthetic testing because, yeah, we can try to simulate users, but every user, once again, as Tammy explained as well, every user will experience the website and perceive the website being loaded in different ways. So every user will start to interact with uh, at a different timing with your web page as well. That's why it's difficult to um, perfectly uh, simulate IMP in synthetic, synthetic testing. Okay, so what is IMP? Uh, you can uh, divide IMP into three phases. And um, I think the easiest to explain is, um, well, obviously, let's start at the beginning, input delay. Whenever some chat widget is still running, when you try to interact with the web page, then there is a click event uh, happening. And the user, well, I should say the browser, can only um, work on my event listener after it was done processing the JavaScript of the chat widget. And it's now like I'm blaming third parties. Uh, which but you are. Which maybe I am. But it can also be the boot up time of uh, well, whatever framework you're using or SPAs that are doing um, hydration, for example. So it could either be third party or first party related JavaScript that is causing an input delay. It basically means the browser cannot even start to yeah, process your event handlers while it is still busy running that JavaScript for, one uh, well, as I, I said before, third party or third party. Then I already used the term processing. Obviously, if I do click on the hamburger menu or add to cart, but let's use the hamburger menu. If I click on the hamburger menu, then some JavaScript typically needs to run to add a class to whatever element. Um, luckily, I hope so. In the case of a hamburger menu, it might only be a small task, uh, adding a class to whatever element, uh, which is the processing time. And then the user expects a visual change, um, but it still needs to happen. It's not like everything is happening magically within one millisecond. It still takes the browser a bit of time to, after the class was added to uh, your menu, to display it, display it, to change the pixels in your screen, which is the presentation delay. So in the beginning, FID was only measuring the input delay, while in reality, there is way more happening in a browser, which matters as well, especially towards, um, well, how users perceive your responsiveness on your websites, of the websites, of our clients. Uh, in our run data, for example, uh, you could get uh, data like this, but it really depends on where the issues are. Yeah, so then well, what, what we already learned is that FIT replaced IMP, um, which was nice, uh, but then how do you debug IMP? Turns out that there were not that many solutions uh, to help you. Luckily, the Chrome team really uh, pulled through on this one. And actually, this last year, we've seen many improvements to help you improve IMP. So for instance, and we'll go through these later, is that in Chrome 121, we actually got whiskers in our performance panel. In Chrome 123, uh, we got uh, the LOAF API, which we'll talk about later as well, added to the Web Vitals even. And in Chrome 129, which is not released just yet or yes, about yeah. to be, uh, we get a new performance panel, which you'll see here, uh, as well as scheduler yields. These are all very good solutions, both to debug IMP and even improve IMP. Yeah, I'm going to skip the explanation because of uh, time. I'm going to skip the explanation of the performance panel, although I do think it's an easier way of, well, a, a better starting point. Uh, it's less overwhelming it will be a less overwhelming performance panel than we have today. So Chrome 129 should be rolled out already currently. So if you hit the, uh, the update button in Chrome, you should already be able to see this. Uh, I think Andrea is actually going to talk about scheduler yield. So we're going, yeah, so I'm not going to dive into that um, 
at all in that case. Go to his top, people. Yeah, to save uh, <laughs> some time. Um, and the whiskers, what the hell are whiskers? Well, I think the whiskers that Google Chrome team added to the performance panel is very convenient. You might still not know what whiskers are, are so here we go. Um, you will see little whiskers at the left and at the right, which are representing the input delay phase and the presentation delay phase, which I think is very convenient because you can now visually, when you're using DevTools, which is already quite overwhelming by default, um, but now you can actually visually align what is happening, uh, where the uh, processing time is, well, where your uh, event is, uh, is happening and what's happening um, in a flame chart on the main thread. So I do this is I do think this is very convenient, <laughs> a very convenient addition. But how to track IMP? Well, we already learned first of all when it comes to synthetic testing uh, that you can use Lighthouse, although we can all, all only work with total working time. The new DevTools performance panel. Um, but what applies to me on my fast device when I'm s when I'm testing might not apply to my average. A median or 75th percentile user. So you also would want to track this in real life, once again, which is what real user monitoring data is about. Um, and then also track LOBAF uh, in real life. And we didn't include it in the slides, but the official Google Web Vitals library already includes uh, LOBAF data in a library as well. And even Google says so in one of their uh, pages. Um, that, um, well, by gathering metrics from actual users in the field, um, you'll be able to get a better understanding of what's happening because Crux data does contain IMP, but doesn't contain a breakdown and also does not contain uh, low of data. So what can you do with low of data? Well, I'm first going to skip to the uh, presentation by, um, once again, I'm not going to show this video, but uh, Jeremy Wagner also talked about um, the Web Vitals library and yeah. data. Because what you can use, of course, and you might even use it, uh, is the web vitals uh, yourself. Uh, but if you'd like a commercial uh, vendor to do all the work for you, then uh, there are actually many present here in this room even, um, who can help you out and who were all probably very proud to have been featured in this Google I.O. Uh, including us. So actually this is a great uh, explanation on IMP and getting it in the field. So I would recommend uh, watching it, but we'll be moving forward. Yep, we'll do, because we're up for the last question. Ten more players dropped out, Aldo, 26. <laughs> no, okay. they're getting there. Yeah, let's They start. just have a little input delay. Here we go. What is the best CSS property to animate elements? What is the best? Is it margin top, padding top, top, or transform? For everyone who's not a developer, are you kind oh. of questioning your decisions on being here right now? <laughs> well, apparently not. Okay. <laughs> no, okay, nice. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do have one slide to explain why. Well, first of all, if you use transform or opacity property, by the way, um, the, the animation or change, visual changes, is basically offloaded to the GPU, graphical card, instead of the CPU. So um, it will be moved away from the main thread. And what I didn't say, say before, but it's quite important, I guess, is uh, browsers are single threaded. They can only do one task at a time, although there is a little nuance, service workers, but I'll not be diving into that today. Maybe Andrea is covering that, no? Okay. I, um, I actually like to make a joke here, is that um, they're just like men. They can't multitask. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Also, I should say, um, I'm a woman. I also can't multitask. But the, 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 the joke is not that great. Now. <laughs> There's another win when, when using transform. If you use transform, you get a very smooth transition as well because it will then be done uh, by 60 frames per second instead of 30 frames per second. But the most import important difference is, once again, if you use margin top, padding top, left, top, right, whatever, then it will be done uh, using the CPU on the main thread. Um, and whenever other JavaScript is running or other animations, it cannot do those tasks simultaneously. So the result is that you get a very laggy experience. You might have noticed this on um, sites with a cookie widget, where the cookie widget is sliding in from the bottom. Um, and you might have experienced on some sites, unless you've got a very fast device, because device memory matters. Um, but otherwise, you might have seen animations where the cookie notices like this. 
if, you if you've seen that before, well, now you know why. One of those cookie solutions is, I hope no one's from OneTrust here today, <laughs> OneTrust. Well, actually, you would like someone to be from OneTrust the and then can fix it. <laughs> they use the bottom property to, once again, slide in the animation from the, the cookie notes from the bottom. Um, and uh, while well they should have used the uh, transform translate uh, combination instead to get it off the main thread. Yeah, because, uh, well, this was very much your meme, but yeah, True. third parties actually uh, always say that they don't matter to your uh, interaction or website at all. There is zero impact, says basically every third party vendor in the world. But there is, or at least there can be. Uh, even we are willing to admit that there is a small JavaScript price that you have to pay to uh, add run vision. Um, so yes, uh, but what is that impact? Um, how do we, well, make if sure yeah. that we actually fact check those uh, tobacco CEA If companies. even these people are willing to lie, don't expect third party to tell the truth when they say that their, their third party won't come with a performance impact. Well, at least don't their marketing. <laughs> True. Um, right. And debugging this is why we love low off. I'm going to move on, by the way. Because it's long, reasons. yeah. It's Maybe long animation mind. frames. And actually, I had a co talk with uh, Noam Rosenthal uh, last week. Why did they introduce low off? Because, well, as we already learned, um, there was a very big shortage of good debugging tools, and a long task came short. Um, because it could never give you the. Yeah, it couldn't really attribute long tasks to a specific uh, third party or first party okay. or whatever resource. So let's move on to that specifically. Um, if you do use the long animation frame API like this, then you'll get data like this. And I'm going to dive into the scripts object specifically, or I should say script array, technically speaking. Um, and then you basically get a kind of a git blame or name and shame, which I think is the best part. Um, you, re re you really get the specific source URL, function name, um, not all the time, by the way, um, and character position as well. And the invoker type, which is also very convenient. You get to see if it was the result of a user clicking or maybe if someone's was something was already running at that moment when a user tried to click. Um, diving in into the source URL, um, I should add that it will be the entry level, uh, entry point um, file. So if you use Sentry or New Relic is a common one as well in Magento stores, um, then it might be, the, the, the wrapper might be blamed. Um, but uh, overall, in general, we do get quite some valuable data out of the LOAF API, which is, um, well, yeah, why I would say... We love LOAF. We love LOAF. And if you haven't started using LOAF yet, either do it yourselves. Um, I've got another slide. Well, let's first go to git blame and name is shame. This is the kind of data you can get from using LOAF in the field. And it makes discussions easier. For example, with marketing team, um, you don't really need to, to debug yourselves what the biggest uh, impactor is. Um, but you can basically look at a third party screen that we introduced in RunVision and, uh, well, basically uh, conclude that you might not want to start at uh, optimizing Clavio, but maybe you should do something about Hotjar on your website. So it makes discussions less time consuming. And, uh, and we should say that we actually published this for the first time uh, around performance now, and this is a much more recent version from, I believe, two weeks ago. And what we are really seeing before everyone thinks we hate third parties is that they are greatly improving. Yep. Uh, a lot of uh, these have been improved by a lot. A lot of people actually move to moderate and low because no third party wants to harm your website. That's not their goal. They want to help you. Um, but still, it's good to have uh, a discussion about which one you will use for your cookie solution, for instance. Another example of how you can use low of data, I like to use it like this. Uh, maybe a bit nerdy, but um, I like to but use... But then you are nerdy. I like to use <laughs> performance marks and performance measures to get um, well low of data on my timings track in my performance panel, uh, which, well, I think... Google is moving uh, into a direction where, and I should say the, the, the Chrome team, um, is DevTools team is moving into a direction where uh, eventually low of data might be included out of the box. Currently, 
uh, it isn't the case yet. So that's why I just like to add um, the low of API manually to my pages and then get it on the timings track. Because once again, the flame charts are still quite overwhelming. And this makes it a bit easier to align with uh, what the biggest contributor is. So what I've done over here is uh, uh, track the low off, the, the work duration, um, and then per low off, then also track the longest running script. So you see little um, spurs of uh, yellow. Um, so I'm over here, for example, the cookie script was the longest running script within this specific low off. And it helps me to align things a bit better visually. We could talk about this for, uh, well, maybe even another 15 minutes, but once again, I would say visit, uh, attend uh, Andrea's talk as well. Um, he might uh, um, uh, address a few of these already. Um, just to simplify things, back forward cache, well, um, if you hit the back, back, it's a browser API where the page can be served from the browser cache, uh, the whole page. Uh, in the same state as, as you left the page, so it's like a snapshot. So all JavaScript was executed already when you return to the page. So no more JavaScript needs to be executed, although obviously still the event listeners. Um, but um, IP should then typically improve as well. Use less yes make, makes sense. Schedule the yield. I'll give that one to Andrea, um, et cetera, et cetera, because I really think we're running out of time. <laughs> we might be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's move on. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, real world control of your socks is in your uh, reach. So to have make sure you have validation and make sure that when you uh, actually add a new script or do a code change that you know what the impact is on your real users. For optimization, it's just especially for IMP, saves you so much time. Um, and assurance uh, that you never, or your marketing department never actually adds a third party that you do not know about. These are very many reasons why uh, making sure that you have a ROM in place helps you. All right, I'm just going to go back one slide. If you do have questions about this, just come to us or me or Andrea afterwards or Barry Pollitt is here as well, maybe some other people who is willing to volunteer. Um, but let's move on. Um, we actually already reached the end of our presentation. So, who won? So let's see who won. So let's check the update from the fifth to sixth question. All right. Uh, yeah, well, we kind of figured Barry. that might happen. <laughs> 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 well, Barry Poller, to you the. Oh, I to gave it to Antonio. Well, where is Antonio Banderas, people? Anto hey, okay. well, <laughs> congratulations on your very first Romy Cup. Limited edition, only five. This <laughs> is the last one. And yeah. then who were second and third? Because I took oh, yeah. little rockets. Do you want a rocket, Barry? <laughs> 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 And then who was third? Nemo. Who is Nemo? Nemo. Who is Nemo? Nemo, Nemo is lost, is people. very anonymous. Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> it is, as a matter of fact, a fish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm the one who well, tends to watch those. <laughs> <laughs> so we might then actually have time for questions. Do we still have time for questions? Awesome. Well, who has questions? No one has questions. Well, nice, then we were clear. Oh, you do have questions. All right, I'm giving the microphone to you. So you've shown to us a correlation between device memory and passing core advisors. Do you collect also CPU, GPU, so having correlation about that? Because I'm wondering if we are seeing a causation or something related to generation device. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not collect uh, CPU, uh, uh, no. Um, the thing is, tracking, uh, well, everything in ROM also comes with a uh, little overhead, obviously, so we have to make choices, uh, but uh, I do think we are exploring to, well, I actually think browsers are working on um, making it easier to grab the, what was it, the, the, the used memory on a page, so we might actually collect that once it becomes available as an API, for example, but I think currently tracking that in real life um, comes with quite an overhead, so that's why we do not track that yet. Yeah. We don't want to be another third party that impacts your performance, obviously. Any more questions? Everyone's ready for lunch? 
Well. All right. Well, yeah. I think uh, well we never updated this slide, but actually you just have two with uh, with us today, uh, just me and uh, Erwin. Oh yeah. We are we are not sponsoring the after party. <laughs> we are not. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, we that actually did this <laughs> slide. Uh, did this this one uh, Friday as well, and then we were sponsoring the after party, but that was in our own town. So yeah. Sorry, yeah. guys. Right. Uh, we'd be happy to provide you with a sandwich downstairs. Uh, so yeah, uh, guys, success. So make sure you get your IMP in order. And thank you.